Hello and welcome to this week's guitar learning questions, guitar Q&A, okay? And the question for this week is how do I play 50s style guitar? But first, my name is Ian O'Brien and this is a video for my Facebook guitar learning group called Guitar Learning Questions. Now, I just want to ask if you watch this video and you get anything out of it, please invite somebody else along to join the group that you feel could also benefit from uh, guitar videos and lessons like that. We're a really strong community, we help each other out in terms of motivation um, and the things that we're doing well, as well as answering questions and stuff to the, the things that are a bit trickier with your guitar playing. And each week I make videos just like this one to answer questions from people in the group. So the question this week, how do I play 50 style guitar? Now, I'm gonna answer this question from the perspective of somebody relatively new to guitar as the person who answered the ask the question was okay and so I'm gonna feature the six Django chords or cherry-picked chords that um, I have sort of as a downloadable thing a lot of you guys in the group already have those chords uh, they're the place I recommend everybody to start learning guitar with any direction they ultimately want to go in I believe it's uh, the best starting point and the quickest way to get moving and changing chords and playing real music on the guitar anyway so 50 style guitar what I'm going to point out, what I'm going to show you today is a chord progression featuring four individual chords that happened very, very frequently in 50s and early 60s music. It's sometimes known as the heart and soul chords or even the stand by me changes or the do what progression uh, because it features in, in those styles of music. It's in absolutely loads of do what songs, maybe, maybe the majority of them. A whole heart and soul classic song, Hoagie Carmichael. Um, it's the main chord sequence for that as well. And Stand By Me, you know, massive, massive song. Possibly the best song ever written. I don't know. It's a great song anyway. So it's the same chord progressions in all of those songs and a whole lot of other songs from that era of music. Okay, they're using some different rhythms, but the actual chords themselves happen in the same order and are the same chords. Okay. Also, this stuff happens in different keys. I'm going to show it to you in the key of G. We're going to start with our G chord. So we're using four Django chords here. The first one is the Django G chord. Okay, and if you don't have your Django chords, your six uh, Django chords cheat sheet, let me know and I can throw the link to that into, uh, into the comments below this video and, and, and you can grab it and uh, get playing this stuff as well. Okay, so the first chord is the Django G chord. You'll need your sheet for this one to look through what's happening in the chords. Django E minor. Okay, then a Django C and a Django D. Okay, you might get that kind of slight hint at this stage. It might remind you of particular songs and, and actually not just 50s and 60s songs, but more modern songs also, but often songs that feature that kind of or reference that classic era. So a lot of the stuff may be on the soundtrack of like Dirty Dancing and that kind of stuff, you know, that kind of 50s sound. This chord progression crops up over and over again. Okay, so songs like Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul. I don't really know the words to the song. It's something like that. Okay, just cycling those same four chords, okay? And then Everly Brothers, here's a classic. All I have to do is dream. Dream. Terrible singing, but that's what happen is happening on the guitar. The chord progression on those songs. Actually, that Everly Brothers song has a little bit of lead guitar over the top as well. Some nice tremolo, really 50s style effects there. But um, the chords themselves, that's the backbone of this stuff. Stand By Me, Benny King, massive song. Same chords. There's the C and the Django D back to the G and that sequence just goes round and round and that's the entire song some of the songs from this era they do have a couple of other sections you, often just one other section towards the end of the song and then it comes back to this main kind of riff this main sequence but this is the core of that stuff okay a few more songs that feature it we've got baby 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 blue moon real classic capital radio by the clash uh, crocodile rock elton john 
Donna by Richie Valens, Earth Angel, see classic doo up there with those sequences, with that sequence. Happiness is a Warm Gun, um, that's a Beatles song, John Lennon sort of trying to contain everything that happened in rock and roll in one song and succeeding quite well. <laughs> Maybe not everything, but it's, you know, some of the different rock and roll stuff going on in there. Uh, Lovable by Sam Cooke. Uh, the Thin Ice, Pink Floyd, a bit different. Um, Why Do Fools Fall In Love and Please Mr. Postman. So some songs from that era, a little bit a little bit around uh, other, other times as well. Um, Always Look On The Bright Side Of Life, uh, Money Python, amazing song. That's the same chord sequence all the, way all the way through. Always look on the bright side of life. Same chords. Okay, there's, there's loads of this stuff. Um, but we're focusing specifically on the 50s and where, that's where this chord progression really came to fruition and really found its home, okay? It's in many, many songs and once you get your fingers around these chords and start moving between them and practicing them, then you'll, and you get the sound of it in your mind, in, in, your, in your ears, and you can hold that kind of sound of the sequence, you'll, you'll start noticing it in songs and that is actually a really, really good thing because Obviously, music is a sound, and as we're learning guitar, we want to partly train our ears to recognize different things and recreate them, different moods and feelings and stuff like that. So, if you um, recognize that chord progression in a song, you'll know how to play the song, and that's a well, that's a pretty impressive party trick, um, especially at the early stages of learning. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about this stuff. I've been Ian O'Brien, this is Guitar Learning Questions. If you do have any questions about your guitar learning, please throw them in the group um, and we'll go from there. If you want a copy of those six Django chords, that cheat sheet, um, also mention it in the comments below and I'll throw a link so you can download it. Uh, and yeah, have a great day guys.